Our first drink is the Paloma, a grapefruit tequila drink from Mexico. The classic version of this drink involves tequila and grapefruit soda, around one part to three parts, squeeze in some lime juice and a pinch of salt, then garnish with a lime. The word Paloma means dove in Spanish, and doves are notorious for making love atop ripe grapefruit, so I'm pretty sure that's how it gets its name. If you want to make a less classic Paloma, you can take a grapefruit, whoops, you want to keep it whole because the small grapefruit packets are too sweet on their own. You you can tell these are farmed grapefruits. The wild ones are a much deeper red color and they're not as big. You can use a fork to get that juice out or a reamer, which is good for reaming. Use a concave wire net to catch the seeds and pulp. Take two ounces of grapefruit juice. Add in two ounces of tequila, squeeze in a wedge of lime, put in a quarter ounce of simple syrup and club soda to taste, and a pinch of salt. To make simple syrup, also known as watered down sugar, you take one part sugar to one part water, melt it in a pot, then allow it to cool to room temperature. To make complicated syrup, you take one part water to two parts sugar to one eighth part water to two thirty two parts water to one sixteenth parts water. You can also make homeopathic simple syrup if you put one grain of sugar inside a swimming pool. You could go with a salt rim if you don't put salt inside it, and garnish with lime or a full grapefruit. Make sure you clean the grapefruit first in case there's Dove love making residue on it. And remember that Paloma has the word pal in it, which makes it a great cocktail to share with a friend, but not with an enemy, otherwise it would be called the Enamaloma. The whiskey sour was invented back in the days where you attracted a mate by puckering your lips. Pucker muscles were severely underdeveloped in those times, so lemon helped many find their one true drunken love. We'll start with two ounces of bourbon, but pour it like you're not already drunk, one ounce of lemon sour juice, and half an ounce of simple syrup. And then you have to decide if you want to add egg white. Point, the egg white creates a creamy, frothy texture that's rather enjoyable. Counterpoint, I came here to drink, not to have a whiskey omelet. Point, but look how cool it looks and hear how great it tastes. Counterpoint, I'm not interested in dying from salmonella. Point, you're being dramatic and you haven't even had a drink yet. If you decide to go with the egg white, an easy way to de an egg is with a plastic bottle. You just squeeze it out, then let it open up and suck the yolk into the bottle elevator. Then we'll add in a quarter ounce of egg white, and then we'll do what's known as a dry shake because there's no ice in it, which is weird since all the ingredients are wet and ice is the only thing that would be dry. Since I don't have a shaker, I'm using a mason jar which not only gets the job done with minimal glass shards, it also makes this a single distilled mason cocktail. Now we'll throw in some ice and shake it till it's cold. Now pour that over a big ass ice cube. You can also use a big ass ice cube with a chunk of yellow pepper inside it. And now I'll just give this a wang jangle with my super fancy drink stirring spoon for no reason since I already shook it. That creamy frothy texture is pretty small so I probably should have used more egg white. Counterpoint, you should have used no egg white. Now if you want to get really fancy, you can take some smoke, trap it inside a glass, and then just leave it there because inhaling smoke is bad for you. Then garnish with an entire lemon if you're in a rush to find a relationship. The bee's knees combines the antibacterial power of gin with the antibacterial power of honey, making it the ultimate cleanse drink. We're gonna take two ounces of jag juice, in this case gin, try to hit the glass when you pour that. Then we'll add three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice and a half ounce of honey syrup, which is just like simple syrup, except it's made with honey. That's one part water to one part honey. Now we'll give this a shake. Oh wait, I forgot I do have a shaker. Goodbye, Aunt Winnie. Now, if you're wondering why bartenders shake drinks and shakers for a ridiculous amount of time, it's because bartenders love attention. Also, it causes dilution, which makes the booze less strong since you can't handle it straight. If you have weak arm muscles, but strong hip muscles, you can always put the shaker in your belt and put on some techno. The Bee's Knees is traditionally served in a coupe or martini glass, but I don't have and or don't like drinking out of those glasses, so I made my own. Very good and very safe. And we'll put that in the molecule slower downer to chill it. Then we'll garnish this with a man in the boat. But do bees actually have knees? Yes, they do. They have a knee on each of their six legs. There are around two trillion honeybees in the world. That's 132 bees knees for every human knee on the planet. So yeah, there's bees knees all right. Mmm, that bee's knees is the cat's pajamas and it'll get you right zozzled and so ossified it'll make any wet blanket spouting applesauce seem hotsy totsy. That's worth five clams. It's better than noodle juice and any dew dropper who says otherwise is full of phonus balonus stuffed with horse feathers. If you don't speak 20s, that means it tastes good. Bee's knees, lions please.
Cause I like it better than boiled trees Make sure to give the glass a freeze Then give me a drink and I'll give you a squeeze I mean, three ingredients, make it with ease We'll whip some up and we'll sail the seas Living our life on the open breeze On a boat with our bee's knees Yeah